We need the Word of God every day. Amen. Amen. And then, uh, so let's read together. Ready? In the count of three. One, two, three. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let's pray. Lord, I just pray right now that you would just touch our hearts, our minds, our lives, God, our ears, and help us to see, hear, know, and understand something new from the Word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God is good. You, can, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm really excited about uh, what God is doing, and uh, I'm excited about the transformation, amen, that's happening in our lives, our lives. Uh, I believe that, that uh, we, we are truly on, on the precipice of something very awesome, okay? Uh, it, it, uh, the thought is really good. I mean, uh, my sermon that I'm going to preach today has already been preached, really. I don't really have anything left to say. <laughs> that was so good. That was so good, though. I mean, I, go ahead and preach it. You're just going to hear it again, okay? <laughs> Out of the abundance of this, what is spoken this morning, maybe something will take root in your life. But that, that is very powerful. Um, as a matter of fact, I think all of us uh, worship the same God. Amen? And all of us can hear from God, the same God, at the same time or at different times, right? And so when I, when I speak a message uh, in this place, Hopefully it's already been preached into your spirit and I'm just affirming what God is already doing inside of you. Amen. And I think it's really powerful. Uh, and, and many of us, uh, you know, that communicate through the week, sometimes we, we find ourselves saying the same thing or God gives us the same thing. And I think that's really neat. But uh, and we, we always get amazed, okay, by what God is doing. But it shouldn't be amazing that we can hear the voice of God. Amen. We should, we should be excited that we are hearing the voice of God. And, and we're all hearing the same God, amen? I think it's really powerful when we can, when we can come to that place in our life uh, or in our walk with God, let me say it like that, where we can uh, hear from God. It's important that we hear from God. I mean, if, if I've been married a long time and I found that if I don't speak to my wife for more than a day or two days, you know, there's something really wrong, okay? And uh, we need to have communication like uh, sometimes hour by hour or minute by minute sometimes, depending on what's going on. Otherwise, uh, there's, there's a distance that happens. And the thing, about, the thing about our relationship with Jesus Christ, okay, is that he is in us. Uh, I, I love that verse, uh, John 10, verse 27. It says, my sheep hear my voice. In other words, you can't even uh, uh, hear God unless you're listening to God, amen? And the best way that I know for us to hear the voice of God is to open up the word of God every single day. I mean, take, take time every day to open up the Word of God. Uh, you know, I, I, I used to do that when I was uh, younger. I was, uh, I was like, I want to I wanna read the God, Word of God. I want the Word of God. And I would open it up first thing. The alarm would go off and I'd sit in bed and I'd open up it like this and I'd go and fall right back to sleep, okay? <laughs> but what I did, what I did, this is what I did. It may not work for you, but I, I literally got up and went to the bathroom and stood on the side of the bathtub, okay? And I would take in the Word of God, and, the, and, the, and I would read it out loud so it would echo back off the wall. But if I fell asleep standing on the bathtub, that would be a problem. So I would never fall asleep standing up there. But I'm, what I'm telling you is you need discipline, okay? You need to discipline your body, right? Romans 12, verse 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, I beg you, brothers and sisters in Christ, to present your body, amen? And that's why we come to church sometimes. We, sometimes we don't feel like going to church, but we have to present ourselves, right? We have to make ourselves available to the Word of God. Make ourselves available. It says, back to that John 10, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice. You hear them through the, through the Word of God. I know them. Jesus comes and knows us. I, I, you know, we were singing about, I want to know you more, right, God? But that's the desire of Jesus to know us, right? So if I just give a, a hint that I want to know God, God's like, whoop. I'm right there because I'm all over that. I want to know you, right? He wants to know us. And, uh, and, then, and then it's very simple. The next step, we just follow him, right? Because we're hearing the voice of God. He knows us. We feel his presence. And then we just follow after him, right? And, and we'll find ourselves in exactly the right place, exactly the right circumstance, right? exactly the right situation that God has foreordained or predestined for us to be in, amen? 
So we walk in, we, we can walk in confidence, right? Knowing that God has already ordered my steps. He's already made a way for me. He's already got me in a, in a perfect place, in a perfect situation. He's got the right people around me to do whatever it is he wants to do in my life. Amen? Woo, I should take an offering up for that one. That's a good one. That's a good message right there. <laughs> but I, I, I love the word of God and uh, uh, I won't preach it like it was preached earlier, but I, I do want to uh, point out just a few things out of this verse, okay? And uh, uh, the, the title is A New Thing because God wants to do a new thing. Go ahead and tell your neighbor, a new thing, right? I mean, <laughs> and then turn to your other neighbor and I'm tired of the old thing. Because... <laughs> Because, you know, what, we, we do have to come to a place in our life where we're desiring something new. I mean, the older that I get, uh, the more that I really uh, anticipate new things in my life. I, I mean, new cars, you know, <laughs> new amounts of money, <laughs> you know, things like that. But we want new things in our life. And I think if the new things in our life are, uh, it seems to bring us a lot of joy. And I've also noticed that if I get a new thing, I'm often... Uh, I'm more apt to tell somebody about the new thing because I'm excited about the new thing. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, uh, a new thing is going to come through an old relationship in my life because I've been serving God since I was 11 years old. I was called when I was 11 years old. I was in my dad's basement and I was, uh, I was uh, kneeling by a chair, old, old chair with a, I, 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 I used to have the chair but uh, I, I got rid of it because it was really old <laughs> and, and broke down and everything. But I was kneeling in front of this chair and I, and I, I truly knew that God had called me to preach. And uh, so when I was 11, I'm 51 now, been 40 years, okay? And, and I'm gonna tell you, it's time for something new to happen, amen? It's time. And, uh, and I'm gonna step across uh, whatever obstacle, whatever circumstance it takes because I know that God, God is in this move. God is in this new thing that he's beginning right here in this place, amen? And uh, I, I can give you uh, time after time, you know, vision after vision, dream after dream, word after word that has brought us to this moment. And I can tell you first, uh, I'm, I'm very, very certain that this is of God, amen? And I'm excited about that. Uh, but I wanna talk to you just for a few minutes and I won't keep you too long today. On, on just a few words, but I want to look at the very first word in the verse, and the, and the word says, it says, behold, and then there's a comma. <laughs> and so I want to talk to you about the word behold just for a second, uh, because uh, what is it that, that, that we are looking at, okay? And I'm, I'm going to tell you right now that, that often in our lives, we begin to look at circumstances or situations or people and they begin to uh, take up our, our entirety of our, our thought processes over time. Uh, I, I remember uh, there were, there were th days that I would go and, and mow and mow and mow, uh, mow the grass. And uh, I would spend uh, two, three hours mowing. And, and some days I, I would take and I would spend all of that time in prayer, okay? And it was awesome because I was building my relationship with God and I was just praying and praying and praying about whatever circumstance. Sometimes I would uh, pray in tongues I didn't understand. Other times I would, uh, I would do what I do a lot, I'm really good at, and that's complain. I would complain to God about everything that's going on, you know. And other times I found myself really just dwelling on a, on a problem or a, or, 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 or a person or a, a situation that was going on. And I would go through the whole entire time and realize I had spent all my time that I had set aside to mow, I mean to pray, I mean to complain, I mean to think about my problems. And I really found out that, <laughs> that the time was really supposed to be set aside for, for my time with God, you know? And I found out that I had, I had messed up and I had given all that time away to something that was really totally insignificant. Matter of fact, the solution that I came up with at the end of my time of, of complaining or mulling over was the wrong solution. And I never ever said anything to the person about it because it really, it really never didn't matter. You know, I'm not gonna change people by yelling at them or telling them, pointing out all their flaws. I'm not, I've been married a long time and it just doesn't work. It doesn't work in my life, <laughs> okay? It doesn't work in my life, you can say amen to that. And it doesn't work in other people's lives. You know, we can't, we can't sit and point out problems with people and expect them to change. But I can tell you right now that if you're willing to take your eyes off of something and put it on someone, okay, and his name is Jesus this morning, if you're willing to behold him, 
this morning, you would find out that your life will dramatically change from this very instant, okay? From this very moment, if we, if we just begin to, to, to live it out, God, I, I just want to walk with you today and really go with him today. God, I just want to read your word today. God, I just want to, I want more of you, like the song says, I want more of your presence. I want to experience more of you. We will find ourselves beholding someone that is able to take care of every single problem or circumstance or relationship in your life. Some relationships may have to go away. Some new ones may come along, but that's up to Jesus Christ. That's up to the, the God that I serve, amen? Because he is the source. He is the one I'm beholding this morning. Behold, behold, behold. I, I love this, this, this word behold because yeah, I always have to go back to where Jesus, his disciples were walking along one day and they said to Jesus, they said, teach us to pray. He teaches to pray. And Jesus says, okay, I'll teach you how to pray. And, and he, 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 the, the word was written down, the Lord's Prayer. And we all know the Lord's Prayer. But the very beginning of it, it said, and he said unto them, okay, listen now, listen. This is the word of God. Time to listen to the word of God because we want God to, to change us, amen? We want to hear him. And he said, he said, when you pray, say, our Father. I, I love it because he says, our Father. Jesus has the same Father that we have, the same God that we're, 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 we're worshiping and singing to and, and I'm, I'm speaking about today is the same one that Jesus had. He said, our Father. We, we have something in common with Jesus Christ, amen? We have the same Father, amen? He said, behold him. He said, our Father who art in heaven, uh, uh, God is above us, amen? It's important for you to understand that he's above us. His perspective is not our perspective. He looks down, at, not down on us, but down upon our problems and our situations, and he has a greater vision than we have, amen? His vision is bigger than my vision. I'm not, he's not focused on what I'm focused on, amen? He's not just focused on this. He's focused on all of the things that are going on, all of this and that and the things that I don't even know about yet that he's going to bring around and bring to pass in my life that, that it's going to be awesome because he, he, I'm his child. I'm his love. He loves me, amen? He's going to work it all out. He says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be, he's holy, right? Our God is holy. I just, I just highlight some of the words. I'll just give you the highlights because I don't have time to preach the whole the Lord's Prayer because it's really, really powerful. But he says, when you pray, he said, remember our Father and that he's holy and that uh, we want his kingdom to come, amen? His kingdom to come and his will to be done, amen? Give us this day, all right? And forgive us our sins, deliver us from all the problems, right? Amen? We just went through that whole prayer right there. But the only thing that really, we're really responsible for is for us, we have to forgive. That's, that's what holds us back. Okay, all of this good stuff is out here, but he, he says in that prayer, the biggest thing, that the, only, the only thing I have to do is forgive. Amen? And Lord, help me to forgive. And forgive involves something called forgetting, right? Which is back to the context of this verse Isaiah 43, it said, forget the former things, right? And so a lot of us in our lives, we must forgive not only what's gone on, what's happened to us, we must forgive what we have done to others. Come on. And, and we also must forgive ourselves for what's... <laughs> if we can't forgive ourselves, we can't even step into a future because we, we, we've got to forget, though, some things. We've got we to gotta lay some things down, Amen. We gotta, we gotta remember that forgiveness equals freedom, right? Forgiveness equals freedom in my life. And I, I think God is looking for somebody, anybody this morning. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. If that, that would just say, I'm just gonna behold you this morning. I'm gonna set my focus in the right place. I'm gonna set my eyes, not on what I can get, right? But on, on the one that is able to give, it is the giver, the giver, the giver, right? Amen? That's important. So, so behold, I, I love that, and it's comma, it's behold comma. I have to look, I'm a punctuation guy, but if you look at the, the comma, it means I stop and I pause and I be, look at what I'm beholding. Amen? And so then we go on and it says, I will do a new thing. And it, and it, and, and it says, it's a declaration almost, I will do a new thing. So I, I, I think it's important for us to come to a place where we say to God, God, I give you permission to do a new thing, amen? I give you permission to do a new thing because what it does, it takes, it takes me out of my comfort zone because I, I like to get up in the morning, I brush my teeth, I don't know who brushes their teeth, I hope everybody does. Did you ever notice that you always brush your teeth the exact same way every single day? It's like you don't ever switch hands. I mean, if you're right-handed, you use your right hand. If you're left-handed, you use your left hand. And if you're, you, you have a routine that you go through, you don't, you don't change it. 
but it says a lot about our lives because we really like routines. We really like the same thing, the same way. <laughs> our coffee's gotta be black, it's gotta be hot. You know, our, we like our food right now and if we get it a second later than we were used to, we're not, we're not happy. If someone cuts us off while we're driving in our lane, we don't, we're not happy. And, and we get these routines going in our life and I'm gonna tell you right now that if you're gonna tell, say, say this to God, that statement to God, God, do it, I, I give you permission to do a new thing, he's gonna do a new thing and you're not gonna like it probably because it's out of your routine, okay? Because I'm beholding God, I'm loving him, I love you Jesus, but I want a new thing, but I'm not willing to let him do a new thing because I don't really want him to do a new thing because he's gonna mess up something I've already got figured out, right? And he's gonna, he's gonna keep me, keep me from, from doing what I've, I'm, I'm supposed to be doing, right? Because my plan is this, right? This, this and this. I'm, I'm gonna tell you that God's gonna mess it all up because that's what he does. He messes up things when he does new things. Come on, new thing is not something that's old. It's not something I'm familiar with. It's brand new, and that's what I want. I want something brand new from God. I want a new vision, come on, from God. I want a new, a new revelation from God. I want, a, I want a new, I want something new, whatever that is. I don't know what that is, God. Give me a new day. I mean, even Joshua said, he said, sun stand still, right? And the sun didn't move. Come on. That was a new thing that God had done just for Joshua because he asked. It had never happened before. It has never happened since. Uh, the sun just stopped. It didn't move. Okay? Only because he was fighting a battle that he needed to win. Come on. And, and, and God had called him to that battle and, and, and asked him to, to fight the battle. Right? And, and he had entered in and he began to fight. But he said, I need more daylight. And he said, God, just... just just don't move, son. I mean, he didn't understand uh, how, how the, the solar system worked. You know, he didn't know that the earth revolved around the sun. I don't know, did the sun move or did the earth stop? I don't even know how that happened. But somehow, right, the sun kept its place for Joshua because Joshua asked God for a new thing. Come on, a new thing. Come on. And you could go all the way back through all of, all of, all of the Bible and we can look. And I, I, I said this a few weeks ago, but it's really powerful. David was a little, little bitty boy and he walked out and confronted a giant, a big giant, with just a stone and a sling. That was a new thing. God did a new thing right there. And was David scared? I, I bet you he was scared. Did, was David unsure? I bet he was unsure. But he knew that God was able to do something and he operated something called faith and stepped out and began to do what God had called him to do. And guess what happened? The giant fell, right? So there's just two examples of new things right there. And I could go on through the Bible, story after story, and I could show you new things. But it took, it took people having faith and beholding God, looking to him, who, who is the author and the finisher. I, I love that word, and I keep, I keep coming back to it. But, but not only did God think about you before you were born, all right? He selected your parents. He selected all the things that happened in your life to bring you to this moment right now. Not only did he write it down, he authored it, Right? But he also gives you a promise. He says, I will finish what I have started in your life. I'm going to finish. Not only did I write it down, but I, I love that God thought about me. I love the fact that, that God actually counts the hairs on my head. I mean, like this morning, like, like today. Right? Some fell out, some grew back. Most of them fall out, most don't grow back. But, but, but he, he knows the number. I mean, that means that he's intimately involved in every circumstance of my life. That's powerful when you think about that. God, I give you permission to do a new thing. Amen? That's faith. I'm operating my faith right there. That's, this is a faith-build message. Build that faith up. Come on. Write that down. If I was writing something down right there, I would say, God, give, give, I give you permission to do a new thing. And I would declare that over your life this week. And I would say, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at you. I'm going to behold you more this week. I'm going to pray a little more. I'm just going to read the Word of God just a little bit. I'm going to see what you're going to do new in my life today, 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 today. God is a now kind of God. Amen? A new thing, a new thing. I, I, love, I love this verse in uh, Psalms 98, verse 1. It says, it says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Come on, a new song. Because <laughs> you know what? I, I, I love that verse because it just, it just talks about our typical day, all right? And, and maybe your day is different than my day, but sometimes we get in the same situation and we start singing the same song, okay? Oh, my goodness. So-and-so just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes I, I wake up grumpy, but most of the time I just leave, let her sleep. <laughs> but, 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 so, 
But often in our lives, you know, <laughs> often in our lives we find ourselves in that same situation, right? Where, where, where we see somebody coming, okay? Here they are. Oh my goodness, what's going to happen today? <laughs> the same thing that happened yesterday. And we've already figured it all out. But I'm going to tell you, sing a new song. Sing a new song. All you have to do is change the melody, okay? I sometimes wake up grumpy, but other times I just leave her sleep. You know, it's a lot better than, oh my goodness, grumpy's getting up, you know? <laughs> because we just need to, I know we could put some words to that, probably make a lot of money. I could make a CD. Um, that'll be coming later, but I'm just going to tell you right now, change the song. Change the song. You know, <laughs> okay, n n nobody's going to buy my CD, I guess. <laughs> I, I would, my mom would buy it, though. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. I mean, one time I used to write a blog. I was writing a blog, and uh, it became a joke because I'd write this blog, and the only one that liked my blog was my mom. <laughs> every, every week she'd be like, this is amazing, and nobody else would ever like it. I was like, <laughs> at, least, at least my mom likes it. Yeah. And I don't know if she really liked it. I think she just is doing that to make me feel better. <laughs> After week after week, she found out that nobody else liked it. She's like, I got I to gotta help my boy. <laughs> but but God, God can give us a new song, amen? We can wake up every morning with a new song. Isn't it amazing that God wants to reveal himself to us every day a little different, a little more, a little more wisdom, a little more knowledge, a little more joy, a little more whatever it is that, that, that we need in our life for that moment? God, God is wanting to give us a new song, amen? A new song. He's put a new song in my, in my heart, right? In my mouth that I can be, because that's what comes out of our mouth is what is in our heart, right? Romans 10.10, 10, right? With, 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 our, with our heart, we believe unto righteousness. With our mouth, confession is made. What, whatever comes out of your mouth is what's in your heart. So if you're singing grumpy songs, guess what? You're grumpy. Your heart is grumpy and it needs to be changed. And if you're singing good songs, that's what's in your heart. So what we want is what... Uh, we want Jesus in our heart. We want to behold him in our heart. We want to take him into our life. And we want to begin to let that come out of our mouth. And it's going to sound like a new song. People are going to go, what happened to the old whatever, what your name is? I'll fill in the blank for you. But, but what happened to that old person? What happened to them? Why are they different? They're going to come up to you and they're going to go, why are you different? Why are you so happy? Why aren't you? Why, why, why is this going on? You're going to be able to have the opportunity to sell, sell them, tell them, sell them the, the truth, okay? of what is happening in your life. Amen? Amen? <laughs> I, I love that. I love that. I love that. Uh, uh, let's go on. I'm going to go on to expectation. I want to give you a word called expectation. And I, I'm, this word is very powerful to me because this year, uh, at, at the beginning of the year in January, we set, we set a, the word expectation out there because... I believe it's important for us to begin to expect God to do something in our life. Amen? Expectation. So let's say that with me. Expectation. And then, I, and then I, 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 behind that word in the parentheses, I put unexpected but expected. See? Expectation, uh, uh, as, I, as I begin to think about that word after I had chosen that word, I begin to think about that because expectation means that I have set an expectation for God to fulfill in my life. And I don't really think that's exactly what God has had in mind when he, when he called us to be Christians. He doesn't want us to, to determine the destination, all right? God, God has not called us to determine our destination. And, 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 and that's what happens in our life often is if we don't get to certain de destination that we think we should get to, we get unhappy, we get dis discouraged, we get uh, uncomfortable, we get to a place where we don't really understand uh, why it's got to be like this. But if you give up the destination, right? I place the destination in, in God's hands. Amen? Uh, we can say that, say that together. Lord, I just give you my life. Yes. Oh, come on. Because that's what a Christian does, right? A Christian yes. gives up his life and says, I no longer uh, have, the, have the right, right, to my life. I give it to, to Jesus, right? Jesus, be Lord of my life. Come on. Uh, these are key words there. But I, I give up my life. Uh, and, and the Bible says that whatever I give up for him, I'll get back much more than I give up. Amen. Amen? And so if I'm willing to give up what I think is so precious, he's going to give me more preciousness than what I give up. Come on. And, and so we got we to gotta be willing to give God everything. Amen? 
even the destination. The destination. I don't, I, I, I mean, I, I used to have a plan. I was going to retire and I was going to do this and I was going to do that. And by 30, I'd be a millionaire and da 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 da. I was going to have uh, kids and I could, you know, all this stuff. But you know what? God is the God of my destination. Okay? Unexpected, but expected. Okay? I don't expect the end. I just expect Him to be in charge of the end. Isn't that powerful? I, I, I give up my expectation. And, I, and I, I think we should change the word from expectation to expectancy, right? Let's be expecting God to show up in my life today. Come on, let's, be expect, let's have the expectancy for him to do something powerful. Let's have the expectancy that he's able, come on, that he can do whatever he wants to do because I'm, I'm submitted to him. I'm going to let him be and do whatever he wants to do in my life. Amen? I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to fight the process. Like, come on. I'm not going to fight the process. We talked about it a couple weeks ago uh, about, about how the flower, right? Flower is just the middle part uh, after the grain has gone through the process, right? The middling is what the flower is that comes, uh, uh, that comes through the process, the middle part. That's, that's why it's the heart. God always looks at the heart of us. He's only interested in the middle part, right? Because that's the process. After the process has happened, the middle part is what he uses to create something awesome from. Amen? Come on. He's going to create cupcakes and, and bagels and, and uh, cakes and, and all kind of sweetness because that's what's inside of me. Come on. He's going to create sweet things. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you following what I'm saying? Because he wants the heart. Amen? He wants the heart that's soft and tender and pliable and, and, and workable. Come on. He's, he knows the flower has already submitted to the process and it's ready for the next move of God, the next thing that's going to happen. And that's what he's looking for from each of us. Commit your way unto the Lord, right? Trust in the Lord. I, uh, uh, I, uh, Psalms uh, 37, 3 through 7, it says some very powerful things. I'll just read a few words. It says, trust in the Lord, delight thyself in the Lord, commit your way unto the Lord, and then it says something really powerful, rest in the Lord, right? I'm resting in the Lord. I'm not struggling to, to figure it all out anymore. I'm, I'm not confused by where my, where my source is. I've been beholding Him, right? I've set my expectation in the right place. He's given me a new song, and now I'm resting in his way. Come on, I'm resting in his way. That, that's really powerful. And that brings us me to the next word. The next word is way, right? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Come on, he's the way. When it, when it seems to be, when there seems to be no way, and there's a kind of a coin statement, but where, where, there, where there seems to be no way, we say Yahweh, right? We say, we say, come on, he's the way. Jesus is the way. Amen? Uh, uh, I look at I look at the uh, 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 I, I want to look at a contradiction for a second, if I could, just for a few more moments. Uh, John uh, 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 John knew who God created him to be. Okay, and I'll prove that to you in John one verse twenty two and twenty three. We see that uh, people came and they said, "Who are you, John?" And John said said to them to those that came, he said he said. I, he said in verse 23, John 1, verse 23, and you could write that down and go back there later. Uh, I'm preaching fast. This is called fast, fast preaching, okay? John 1, verse 23, it said, uh, John said to them, right? He said, I am the voice. Come on, I'm the voice. He knew who he was. I, I find it really powerful when you, when you know who you are because God created you to be something. God created you to be something powerful, Amen. And, and But we have to come to the understanding of who are we? Who did God create you to be? Is it a worship leader? Is it a, a preacher? Is it an evangelist? Is it a teacher? Is it a, is it a, 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 a whatever it is, a, a floor sweeper? Is it just a, a, the voice? Come on. You might just be the voice of one crying in the wilderness. You might, go, you might be going out into the wilderness and just crying out and saying, oh, Okay, but whatever it is God called you to be, you need to understand who you are. Let, now let's, look, let me show you a contradiction. Uh, John 14, verse 6 through 9, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh the Father but by me. Jesus knew who he was. Amen. It's powerful when you know who you are. Because if you know who you are, you don't have to pretend to be somebody that you're not. Come on. 
We, we, there's freedom in knowing who you are. There's freedom in knowing who you are. There's freedom in knowing that Jesus is the way. He's the truth and he is the life. He's my life. My life comes through him. Amen? And I, and I, can, I can relax in knowing that I stand this morning. Come on. I stand this morning in my office. I stand this morning in my place. I, I, I am not in another person's place. I'm in my place. And I stand here this morning knowing that God has called me to this place on purpose for a purpose. And I know that he, his intention is to do a new thing. Amen? And that, it, that, that new thing will come to pass. Come on. Because I will not stop it. I will not stop letting God do whatever it is he wants to do with me from now on. Amen? I've come to a place in my life. I've lived long enough. I've tried it different ways. And I know that this is... The only way that God will ever take me to the right and correct destination. Amen? And I'm going to tell you, there might be a Jericho in front of us. Okay? There might be a Jericho in front of us. Uh, matter of fact, I will tell you, there is a Jericho in front of us. That, and that, that looks like a big walled city that is impenetrable. And I can never get into it. I'll never see a, a way through it naturally. Okay? But I'm going to tell you right now, when I lift my hands and I begin to worship the God of, of heaven above. And I begin to tell him that he is the King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. That those walls will fall down. That there will be a, a way made in the desert. Come on, I'm going to have some water in the desert. I'm going to have all that I need because he is my source. Amen? And I will lift my hands and worship him in this place. Amen? In this place. And if nobody else shows up, I will still worship him. Because he is, he's the God of all creation. He's my God. I will lift him up. And I will believe him for a new thing in this place. Amen? Amen. Woo! <laughs> Let that be our expectation. Can I say that again? Let that be our expectation. Come on. I want to see God do something great. I... I want to I want to kind of wrap this up for a second, but I want to show you something, okay? And I was I was praying uh, just just last night. I was in the mid middle of whatever we were doing, and I had stepped into the, the sanctuary of the church into my office, okay? <laughs> Anytime I get in the sanctuary of a church, I feel like I own that church. That's my my sanctuary because that's where I I'm called to those places. And and I was standing in there, and I was. Uh, I think I was sitting down on the, on the pulpit or whatever. I was sitting down and uh, I, I heard the Lord speak to me and he said, he said go back and look at the first miracle. And I, uh, I found, uh, I, I had preached this, I don't know, maybe uh, eight months ago or so. It was a while back, a year ago maybe, uh, at the close of one of the messages that I had done. And, uh, and I went back and I looked at John 2, verse 7 through 9. And uh, it's the first miracle that Jesus did, and we, we know that's the miracle that, that Jesus uh, was at a wedding, right? And, and, and his mother uh, found out that there was no, no more wine, right? And, and she, uh, she comes to Jesus and says, they have no more wine. And then Jesus says, uh, what, do, what do I have to do with you, woman, right? Which is a good line if you ever get married, uh, say that to your wife, and, and she, she'll really appreciate you. But <laughs> what is it that I have to do with you, woman? But, but she said, she, she didn't even acknowledge that he said that. She just turned and looked at the servants and said, whatever he says to do, do it, right? And, and, and so Jesus said, uh, go get some water. So they got water and they filled these pots, okay, to the brim, to the top, right? And, and then he said, dip it out and take it to the head of the, uh, and give it to him to drink. And so when the guy had taken a drink uh, he said this is the best wine I've ever had okay Jesus had performed a miracle his very first miracle and uh, I, I love this miracle because uh, 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 Jesus defies every single law okay <laughs> known to man okay because we have laws we have gravity right we have uh, uh, time right we have time we have we have uh, uh, in, in this miracle, Jesus didn't have any grapes. So he didn't have substance, right? He didn't have matter, okay? So, so, it, so time, space, and matter are all uh, disconfigured, discombobulated in this miracle, all right? So Jesus didn't have grapes. And if anybody knows anything about, about wine, if you're going to make wine, it takes roughly around nine months to, to come up with wine. That's any good. Okay, and it really depends on the stock. It can take up to two years. It can take a long time to make wine, right? So G what Jesus did, oh, some of us can wine 
uh, pretty easily every day, right? <laughs> We're good at making wine. Uh, but, but Jesus made wine without grapes. I'm just telling you, it's really powerful. Also, Jesus uh, did it, did it with, 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 without taking the proper time. So there was no time. I don't know how long it took him to fill the pots. I don't know how long it took him to walk. And I don't know if the miracle occurred at the moment they poured it in the pot or the, the moment they dipped it or the moment that he took to taste it. But there was, there was a miracle that happened. There was, it was absent from time, right? Matter. And, and, and it happened because it was a miracle. But I'm going to tell you right now, often in our lives, we begin to look at what is missing in our life, the missing ingredient, okay? And it might be time for us, it might be space, or it might be substance, okay? But I'm going to tell you that whatever the missing ingredient is in your life, the miracle is in the source, okay? The source of miracle, his name is Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And all of those things that we need or desire or focus on in our life, Jesus is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can think or ask in our life. Amen? And so there's, 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 I might not have enough time. You say, I don't have enough time. I'm going to tell you, you do have enough time. You say, I might not have enough money. I'm going to tell you, you do have enough money. You, you might say that I don't have enough influence, but I'm going to tell you right now, you have enough influence. You might say that I don't have this or I don't have that, but you do because his name is Jesus. It's about faith in the name of Jesus, okay? Because he can do it. All of the things that we don't think he, that we can do, all the things that limit, I said this too a while back, but the thing that limits God is not him, it's us, right? Because, and we talked about this too, but if you take a, if you take a little cup and you, sit, and you get into the river, right? And you put the cup down in the river, how fast is the cup full? Just like that. If you get a big bucket, okay? You stick it in the river, well, how fast is it full? Just like that. If you get a van, cut the, cut the doors off the van, and you drop the van in the river, how fast is that van full? Just like that. If you've got a big ship, I don't care how big your container is, the river doesn't run dry, the, 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 the vessel's going to fill up. I'm going to tell you the limiting factor is not God. It's not God at all, it's us. It's our, it's our inability to believe Him for something. Come on. And I'm going to tell you right now, we need to understand that we need more capacity. We need more capacity in our life to receive what God has going to do because it's going to be a new thing, okay? It's going to be a new thing. It's going to be a new thing. It's going to be a new thing. So if you would stand with me, I want to just pray with you. Actually, the prayer that I want to pray is more of a declaration today. I, I, I believe that God is, is going to do something powerful, okay? Something that has never been done. And so uh, we, we have to come to an understanding this morning that Jesus is the only one we need. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is all we need. Amen? And then say it like this. I need him. Declare that into your life. I need him. I really do need him. I really do. And then say this with me. Lord, do a new thing in me. Do a new thing in me. Now I want to I just pray with you. If you could just let me pray for you this morning. Father, open up our minds to think a new thing. <laughs> Father, open my ears to hear a new thing. Father, open my eyes to see a new thing. Father, open my heart to feel a new thing. Father, open my hands that I might receive a new thing. Father, I give you permission to do a new thing in my life. Amen. I don't know how you feel this morning, but I, my prayer this morning is that you would feel new. Feel a newness Feel an excitement begin to build in your, in, your, in your walk, in your heart, in your mind, in your life, in your relationship with him this week. Let, let, him, let, him, let him be new in your life this week. Walk, walk new. You know, I've been serving the Lord a long time, and I've found that if I only let God do what he's already done, the former things, guess what? That's, that's all I'll ever see. But I can't see new things if I only look at old things. 
okay? I've been married a long time, and sometimes when I look at old things, okay, right? I look at that relationship, and I only see what I've always saw. I'll never see something new. And relationships are meant to be exploring each other until you find something new about somebody that you've seen a long time. But that's what keeps that relationship fresh. And I'm going to tell you right now, my relationship with God is only as fresh as I'll let it be because God is always willing to bring something new out. Always. He, he's got an eternity of new things for us. An eternity of new things. I've only lived a short time in this earth, but I know that he's new, 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 new every day for me. His mercy is new for me every day. Amen? He forgives me even though, even though he knows I'm going to sin today. <laughs> as soon as I leave here, I'll probably say something wrong. Okay? But he still loves me. New, new, new. New, new, new. God, do a new thing. I give you permission for a new thing. Amen. A new thing, a new thing, a new thing. A new thing. I, my, my desire, I, I hope that I have given you the, that same desire to let God be new here. Amen? In us. Get excited about that. Get excited about that. Amen? Can we give God some praise in this place? Let's give him some praise. Amen. God is, God is doing good things. Amen? And so I just pray as you go into the week that you, you get excited and look and be, be, be expecting. Get, be, have an expectation, right? An expectancy that God can do whatever he wants to do. Amen? Moment by moment. Amen. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord.